Hey guys! I am so happy you're here. <laughs> um, and I can't believe I'm doing this. This is my very first YouTube video. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you see some dogs walking around, you'll be seeing that a lot because I have two dogs. Um, Robley, who's a sweet golden retriever, and he's on my leg right now, and Maple, who is my sweet Bernese mountain dog. They're just the light of my life. So you'll be seeing them a lot on my channel. And thank you so much for being here. This channel is something that I've had on my mind for a while. And I knew, you know, when I started my business, not necessarily I knew that I wanted to do YouTube, but I feel like I've always had a knack to want to do YouTube. I've watched so many influencers, so many bloggers. YouTube has become such a learning environment and I just feel like I YouTube everything. I was hanging a picture the other day with command strips and I had to YouTube it. So yeah, <laughs> that's probably a shame, but I did. We just moved into this space. So you can see I have some things on the wall and thank you YouTube, that's from you. So let's get started. I'll tell you a little bit about me. My name is Brittany Jones and I just got married actually. I got married in October of 2019. My fiance, oh my gosh, fiance, my husband, my husband, my husband, um, Zach, he is a realtor and we both live in Northwest Arkansas. Most people have no idea what Northwest Arkansas is. If you know Walmart, which everybody know, <laughs> knows what Walmart is, actually located in Northwest Arkansas, the, the headquarters is in, in Bentonville and that's actually where I live. I live in Bentonville. It's a very cool place. Lots of stuff always going on with Walmart and Tyson is actually from out of here and JB Hunt. So just, just a big corporate environment. But I decided I was not going to go corporate. Uh, sorry, mom. <laughs> but it, it was just a decision that I made and I felt like, you know, I have I have drive and I have passion um, for something and I think that I'm just going to go for it. So, and I think a lot of that comes from my softball career. I played college softball for two years and then transferred to the University of Arkansas to finish. Um, but I think I've always just had a very competitive spirit and that helps me a lot with wedding planning. Talking competitive like have drive and have focus and just you know I, I'm a go-getter I feel like and I feel like that would help a lot of my brides just to know that their planner is an advocate for them and they're gonna work as hard as I can so I hope that's what I can bring to the table to my couples and I hope that you guys see that in my work that's a little bit about me so the point of today's video is to go through the first 10 things that you're going to do when you get engaged it's January. We just went through a crazy engagement season from October really up until New Year's and everybody and their mom got engaged. So it's time to really just start honing in and going through the first steps of the planning process, which is what I'm doing with a lot of my brides right now. This is a big booking time for me and it leads into these first 10 steps. So this is a list that I compiled for you all and hopefully it helps. Let's start with number one. Number one is easy enough and it's going to be celebrate. Enjoy that moment of you and your special fiance getting engaged. You are engaged. Hello. Um, how exciting is that? You've probably waited for this moment for your whole life. So enjoy it. Don't jump into planning. Don't jump into every other possible thing. Focus on that special moment. Trust me, you're going to want to remember it for the rest of your life. Number two is going to be share the news. So call your family and friends, post it on social media, shout out from the rooftops, tell everybody and their mom, I've used that twice, <laughs> tell everybody that you got engaged and just, you know, really enjoy letting people celebrate you and don't be afraid to be the center of attention. This is your big day. Post it on Instagram, post it on Facebook, post it on Twitter, if Twitter's a thing, post it on Snapchat, get it out there, let people know that you guys are engaged and congratulations. Number three is going to be get that ring sized. Whatever ring your fiance picked out for you, take it to the jeweler and if it does not fit, make sure you get it sized. That is incredibly important and it's probably one of the most commonly forgotten things to do that first week of your engagement. That could be really bad if you do not get it sized because it could fly right off. Unfortunately, engagement rings are not cheap to replace. You just have to make sure you get insurance on it and that is the third step. Just make sure that that's good to go before you do anything else. Number four is going to be budget. <laughs> to me, this is like the dreaded step in the planning process. I don't like money, or obviously I like money, but I don't like to talk about money. I think that it's hard to talk about. My 
my husband and I now, we still struggle to talk about money. Um, I've gotten a lot better, but it's just not something that I have ever been a fan of. I don't like numbers. I don't like math. No, thank you. So budget, decide who are going to be the primary people paying for the wedding, whether it be the bride side, the groom side, you and your future husband, just decide who is going to be those primary people or persons to handle that budget. And really, you know, there's traditional ways of doing it. There's certain things that the bride side is notorious for paying for and then same with the groom side, but it's 2020 and budgets can be split truly in any way. So just find something that works for you and your families. And I will say that the average American budget is around $30,000. And I'm not saying that to make sure that you have a $30,000 wedding. I'm just saying that to give you an average to see kind of where you and your family might fall on that totem pole. Take that in and create a budget. Step number five is going to be to figure out who your wedding party is. I know that you've probably planned most of it already but it's just good to get it on paper and not that you have to ask anybody yet but just so you know how many bridesmaids you might want how many groomsmen you might want it's just a good process to go through in these first couple steps of your engagement who might i want as my maid of honor who might i want as my best man the sooner the better you tell your maid of honor because the sooner that they can help you and so that's why it's so far up in the list number six is going to be pick a season fall spring summer winter Decide which one you want. Do you want a wintry, snowy wedding? Do you want a fall wedding with pretty colors? Do you want a spring wedding with flowers that are pink and blush? Go ahead and pick three dates. Three possible dates that you can tell venues that you're interested in. Yes, you might have that one date that your grandparents got married on, or your parents, or just a date that means a lot to you, but make sure you have three options that you would be okay with that will help you with your expectations. Most venues, if you give them three dates, likely they will have at least one of them open. The sixth step goes hand in hand with the seventh step, which is actually pick a style. Ladies, pull out your Pinterest boards. I know you have had it since you were 10 years old. The trends might be a little different, but you can refer back to it and just kind of see what you want to do for your big day. I mean, right now, there's there's a lot of greenery going on, a lot of pompous grass, a lot of modern, but a lot of classic. So just pick a style that you think really reflects you and your fiance. Okay, the moment you've all been waiting for, step eight is to hire a planner. I had to put it in there because it's important. If you hire a planner, they can really help streamline this process. In this stage, you know what style you want, you know what season you'd like, you have a date in mind, and then a planner can really help you start sourcing your venue. A planner is just a great tool to have, especially early on in your process because they can be with you the whole nine yards, every step of the way. Most of you guys have never been married before and you want this to be your dream day. So hire somebody. Sometimes too, when you hire a planner, they have just special relationships where they can get your foot in the door to the right people. Having a planner just means so much. I can go on and on and on, but it'll just really help you in your process. And the earlier you hire one, the better. Step number nine is going to be to figure out a guest count. This is important because there's no way that you can source your venue until you know how many people you're going to have. Some venues hold 300 people, some venues hold 100 people. There's no way that you can know what kind you need until you know your guest count. I know it's hard and you might have way more than are actually going to come. With a wedding out of town, about 65% of your guests come. With a wedding in town, about 75% of your guests come. So that could be a good rule of thumb when creating your list. So to break down the math, if you're having a wedding and most of your family is from the area, you can invite 400 people and you can expect 300 to come. So I would make sure that the venue holds about 350 just to ensure that you're going to be okay. Step number 10 is going to be book that venue. The venue is so important. It truly reflects you and your fiance. And I think that that is something that you have to knock out first. There's no way you can really plan when you don't know what space you're going to be in. The venue, just a lot of things revolve around that. So picking a venue is very important and that's why it's in my top 10. Okay, that's it. That is your full 10 items.